What up, YouTube? I know I post a lot of videos about lawnmowers and, and random stuff, and here's another random one. Um, some people may not know, but I have coached uh, varsity baseball and softball for several years, um, and I wanted to just give you all a quick piece of my mind about travel ball. Um, maybe you're a parent of a travel ball kid. Maybe you are a travel ball player. Um, whatever it may be, I just want to touch on some things that really need to be addressed. Okay, so first things first, when you are deciding whether or not your child should be on a travel ball team or what the next steps are, you have to consider their abilities. Um, when you get to the high school, college, and then the pro level, not that I played at that level, I'm just telling you it's out there. It's not a my baby is the best mentality going forward. It's going to be where they actually rank. So you have to be realistic about your child's skill or your skill if you're a player watching this. Um, and decide where, where it is you rank. Now, with that being said... There's an understanding of the tiers of travel ball teams. The word gets around, you know, this is the best travel ball team in this area, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that coach's job, and I am not throwing off on AAU or travel ball coaches um, in terms of what they do. They're there to win. So when you pay your thousands of dollars, because these prices are up there nowadays, that coach's job is to put the best nine on the field and win as many tournaments as they can possible. Um, they may practice once or twice a week, but not a lot. Um, and they are not working on elementary skills, building the ball, you know, working through the baseball, you know, putting yourself in a position to make the play out in front of you pro hops, bunning drills, all of the, you know, if you don't pitch at that point, if you're not already a PO, you're not going to be a PO for a travel ball team. That's a skill you have to already possess because you have to know how to do a pickoff move. You have to know how to work with catchers that you, you've never met before. Give them your signs. All of that. It's very intellectually um, driven. And with that being said, you have to pick the right travel ball team for your kid. If your kid is new to the game, I would not even suggest travel ball. I would suggest you find your local rec league, much cheaper price, and consider paying for training in whatever aspect it is that your child struggles the most. Start one at a time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Journey of a thousand miles starts with one small step, right? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. In other words, you are not going to develop a superstar in one summer. Okay? So you've got to really be honest with yourself. That's first things first. Figuring out where your kid needs to play. All right? Second. If they really want to be good, practice is not enough. So going home and, and not re refining those skills that you've been working on, if you're not doing that every time you go to practice, primacy, recency, um, it's just not going to work. So that's that. So travel ball to me is all about getting your kid exposure, but you don't want to expose your kid to embarrassment. And that sounds a little bit harsh, but it's a reality. You're talking about a lot of kids nowadays are starting out at that three and four year old range with T-ball. And by the time they're seven and eight years old, they're already pitching. So if your kid is 12 and 13 and this is their first and second year playing the game, 
there's a lot of hiccups to be uh, cleared out. So it's going to take some time for them to actually even get exposure, except for the exposure of the fact that they are new to the game. Um, so that's that. Um, I just wanted to give you all my thoughts on travel ball. I personally um, can see the benefits of travel ball, but I also do hate the idea that travel ball is now being seen as a better outlet than high school ball um, to a lot of people. I'm not saying to everybody, but to a lot of people, high school, I mean, not high school, but uh, travel ball coaches and, and they're the best of the best. The high school coaches aren't really even thought of at this point anymore. Um, and, and in the end, we're ending up at the high school level having to teach how to field the ball, how to catch a pop up because kids are sitting on the bench paying 12 and $1,300 for a summer travel ball team and never getting to play. And then they show up to you and say, yeah, I've been playing travel ball for two or three years. No, you've been watching it. Um, so do with this information uh, what you please. But the biggest thing I want you to take away from this is if you're going to spend a lot of money, make sure you're going to get a return on it. So if I know I'm paying Joe or John Doe X amount of dollars to develop my child's fielding skills, by the time this training is complete, we should see some progress because he's working with my child one on one in groups or whatever it may be. But he knows we're looking for development. If I go out there and pay for a travel ball team and hotels and gas and all of that, nothing's really guaranteed. We may get put out in the first round. My kid was promised to play in the second game. That type of stuff. Um, so make sure at the end of the day, your child is getting better or you, if you're an athlete, you're getting better and actually honing in on those skills that the people who actually are trying to give you positive feedback hone in on those skills they're talking about because that's where they see uh, you lacking. Um, you may not see it. So is travel ball the greatest thing since sliced bread? To me, no. Um, it's creating a lot of craze around a sport that I really, really enjoy. But fundamentals are at an all-time low so we've got to um, really work on our our skills and that starts with training not necessarily playing a whole bunch of games all right youtubians